These are five kitchen tips that will absolutely transform your game. The first tip that you need to be able to do is to take balls out of the air while dinking. The currency of pickleball is time. So by me taking the balls out of the air, it's taking time away from my opponent and causing his next shot to be super rushed where I'm balanced on my toes, able to control him. There's two different types of dinks that we can hit when at the kitchen line. The first one is a more aggressive dink. It's called a push dink. Check out the trajectory of the ball. Push dink, push dink, push dink. The other one is called a dead dink or a defensive dink. It's when our ball doesn't have much spin on it. It kind of just lands over in the kitchen. These are dead dinks. The entire goal of dinking is for you to hit those aggressive dinks and in return, your opponent can't handle it and they hit a dead dink back. That is how you dictate the points. We're gonna play some points without speeding up to try and dictate the other person. Had you on ice skates. I'm gonna get you, let's go. Oh. Ah, nice shot, nice shot. This is where we wanna aim our dinks. If we put one foot in the kitchen like this, and we draw an imaginary line all the way across. When we color in all this space, that is called the pressurized zone. That's where we want the dinks landing. The second tip that's gonna make you lethal at the kitchen line is learning to slide when you get attacked. The higher level player is gonna anticipate a speed up coming at them, and right when their opponent is about to strike the ball, they're gonna step out of the way open up their forehand and use this sideline as an extra teammate. The death of every pickleball player when they're getting attacked is having to flip paddles and guess where the ball is going. When we slide, it takes away the guessing of forehand or backhand and makes it all forehand or backhand, depending if you're a righty, and you're just gauging the distance of the ball instead of which side it's on. As a team, we need to recognize when there's a dead dink on the court, and that means it's probably going to get sped up. So as the partner, I need to step over and cover the empty hole. If I slide out and my partner just stands there, it's going to leave the entire middle of the court open. I want you to watch right when Ridley is about to attack the ball, that's when I slide. If we go too early, our opponent will have the upper hand. I missed that one, but you get the point. The third thing we're gonna cover is simple, but super effective team chemistry. Wherever your team hits the ball, you wanna take one step in that direction with your paddle facing. So if I hit the ball here, we're gonna step like this, okay? Now let's say Ridley hits the ball to this corner. We're gonna step like this. And lastly, if the ball goes to the middle, we're gonna stay, but just lean with our paddles. By being actively engaged in the point, even if you didn't hit the ball and your partner did, say the ball's in that corner, by me being in this position, it's getting me in the position for the ball to most likely go down the middle. If I were to just stand here and look at it and let my partner deal with it, it leaves an open gap. The most common misconception in all of pickleball is that the forehand covers the middle. Not the case. This scenario that you're about to see is the most common question I get asked as a teacher. So we're dinking. Here we go. He pulls me wide. I'm all the way out here. It's my job to come back to close the middle. 
even if I get pulled all the way wide. That's when people think their partner should come over and help. Not the case. I know you're probably thinking, well, I'm slow. I can't get back to the middle like that. It's because you're hitting the wrong shot. When I get pulled out wide like this, the most common thing people do is they flick their wrist and try to hit some crazy shot. This is how you should handle it. Back to me. Now pull me wide, Ridley. Soft to the middle. That way he cannot speed it up. The fourth thing we're gonna cover is when we dink the ball wide, I'm gonna show you what you can do to be more aggressive. When players are cross court dinking, they tend to just stay in this pattern comfortably forever. We need to be able to create some offense out that. So what we wanna do, we wanna to try to hit an aggressive ball wide to his corner and then take a big step to the middle and reach in with our paddle. What this is gonna do is when he tries to hit that shot, we're gonna be there to be able to slam it. You wanna take that step to the middle almost like a surprise attack. You will only do it when you know you hit an aggressive dink out wide. The fifth thing we're gonna cover is when we're at this kitchen line dinking, after we hit a dink, where should our paddle be? As soon as I hit the ball, I should always reach in after it like this. And I'm looking to get a pop-up. Pop-up, nope. Pop-up, nope. And now hit me when I can get out of the air. Pop-up, attack. Every shot that you hit, you always wanna think that your opponent is gonna hit a pop-up back. So when I hit that dink this way, I'm telling myself in my brain, can I get it out of the air? Can I get it out of the air? Can I get it out of the air? And then no, okay, I recover. Another dink goes, can I get it? Can I get it? I really wanna get it? No, that is the aggression that you need. This is the way I see players normally dink. They dink and they stand here and wait for it to come to them. Oh, they stand here. Oh, is it gonna come to me? Nope. And when they do that, they can only attack balls that are blatant and super high. You're never gonna catch your opponent off guard. When we do this, it's going to make the room of error for our opponents so small. They can only dink here because we're out in front covering all this. If we're dinking like this, it gives them the entire kitchen to dink. Now your kitchen game should be the same as a pro.